What's going on? My name is Aaron, and Andrew Tate completely shuts down two porn stars in mid-conversation in what I'm going to describe as the most whimsical way someone can do it. Now, Aiden Ross, another YouTube celebrity, introduces him to Adam22 and Lena the Plug, and we're going to take a look at that and react to this. If you like this type of content, go ahead, hit subscribe, hit the like button, and let's get right into this because, look, I mean, this was just kind of... I mean, I've never been more... Uh, in awe, maybe, or at least I respect him more than this in this clip than any other clips that I've seen Andrew Tate in or any of his opinions. Now, I still don't endorse or agree with some of those opinions, and we'll get to those later in the video. But this first part, this first like minute, was absolutely amazing, and uh, we'll break down as to why I completely think uh, I've got so much more respect from because of this one, like one minute of talking from him. So let's get into it. They, they've already had like a full twenty-minute conversation about sex, and you know, the their whatever, however they have sex together. The, this this porn star couple and uh, Aiden Ross is going to go a little more deeper into it, and Andrew just shuts them down completely. Last thing I want to say is this. Well, not last thing, but I, I think I asked this. But wait, so Lena, which which sex was better? Because you haven't had it. Adam's you and Adam. Sorry, Jason was the first dick you've had. Right? You know what? Let me say, let me say something. I find this very uncomfortable to talk about. Well, There's not many things I find uncomfortable, but I just find this uncomfortable to talk about. And the reason is, is not because I mean I'm an adult. I know what sex is. Of course, I've lived a very varied life. I just feel like I don't know. We have so many people watching us. And we're just talking about dick and vagina. Don't you think this is below us? I don't know. We're all pretty intelligent people. We talk about the Matrix and how they're trying to dumb us all down and trying to yeah. control all of our minds. And this base instinct talk, I find it very uncomfortable. I don't find, I, I'm not comfortable being on this stream. If I was sitting with a woman next to me, the last thing I would talk about is our personal life. I just don't think it's the smart thing to do. And I don't think that it is, I don't have any interest in the personal sex life of any married couple and I don't want to hear about it and I don't want to talk about it. And I just find it very uncomfortable. I'm extremely uncomfortable in this situation. That's the truth. And I'm not saying that from a position of weakness. I'm saying it from a position of strength. I don't like talking about these things. I don't like talking about women getting fucked. I don't like talking about what I do with women. I don't like talking about any of it. I think that what I do in the bedroom with a woman who I care about should be to a degree private, sacred private, yeah. and i think it should be completely private absolutely and i don't want to yeah so i thought that was just really like great i don't know what word to put towards it he, he did multiple things here he totally derailed the conversation this conversation has been going on for about 17 18 minutes at this point about sex and and what they do with each other and all that kind of stuff and how and how promiscuous they are he totally takes control of the conversation and then he elevated everyone and he elevated everyone he said we're all very intelligent and this conversation is below us right and and so he he didn't he, you know push down them he pushed down the conversation which i thought was again whimsical right um, that's the only word that I could kind of come up with because it, it's the, it's, it's so, uh, uh, gentle and yet, um, firm and, uh, and assertive. And so I thought that was very, you know, very well done. And then he called sex sacred. Now, this is the first time I've ever heard him call it that. And I hold the exact same belief. Now we carry it out in different ways, right? But yes, I would say sex is sacred. Uh, this is how the Bible portrays it. This is how God views it. And so, yeah, I think sex is sacred. Sometimes sex can be, you know, disgusting or scary or, you know, worshipped. But I think sacred is the right word. And then he goes on and say, says, I am uncomfortable with the situation. And I'm not saying that as a someone who's weak. I'm saying that from a power of a place of strength. I'm an adult. I if obviously I know what sex is, and so I just don't feel comfortable talking about this. I wouldn't talk about this. And he uses the word "it's not smart." However, I want to come back to sacred, right? Um, in that, it sex is something that should be uh, sacred or or honored, and the way we talk about things sometimes will show whether or not we honor or hold 
uh, in reverence to something that whatever the topic is. So I'll give you an example. For instance, if you're in school and you hear someone talking about your mama, right? Like, oh, your mom is so fat, blah, blah, blah. Your mom, blah, blah. I, yeah, I had your mama and all that, all that nonsense, right? The, the school, school kids like talk like. And uh, you, someone would get angry. Why? Because your mom's off limits, right? <laughs> your mom should be honored. Not that she's sacred, but in the same line and vein, she's honored. And if someone is talking freely, vulgarly, if that's a word, or, or just crassly or crudely about it, that's not honoring to your mom. And now you're offended. And it's not a one for one, but it's the same line. Uh, also, another example maybe would be someone who has passed away. You don't talk ill about someone who just died and passed away. No matter you know, no matter how much they were mean or whatever to you, um, you just don't do it. Why? Because you should honor their memory. That's something that's like, oh man, we should not talk about it so flippantly. And I think why I hold this clip in such high regard and. Uh, how he garnered a lot of respect from me, not that he needs it, um, but that I respect him a, a lot more now because of this clip is because so many times, and this is just a moment of honesty, I've been caught in that situation. Like I'm a pastor, I'm a Christian pastor, I'm like a, you know, I'm not like a fake pastor. <laughs> and I get caught in these situations where, uh, where there's like crude talk going around and I have never taken control of the situation like that. Maybe I just didn't have the tools or resources or feel feel like I, I would offend somebody, but I don't think he, Andrew Tate, offended anyone on that, you know, conversation. Matter of fact, you could kind of see Aiden Ross kind of like nodding along. He's like, yeah, yeah. It's like he didn't offend anyone. He actually elevated everyone. And I never knew uh, how that was possible. I never, I just never seen it. So I'll give you an example of like these situations that I get caught in. For example, if I'm getting caught in like some crude conversation about how guys are talking about, you know, effing this or you know having sex with this girl or whatever. This has happened like more than one occasion. <laughs> so I hang out with a very colorful mix sometimes, and it, that's just like I don't want to be in that kind of talk or that conversation. But I'm stuck in it, and so like you don't want to make anyone feel awkward. So you're like. <laughs> and you kind of joke around with it. Another thing is like, I'll give you a, just a basic example. I went over to see uh, some some friends and family, and we got we were playing this game. Um, and one game one game is like that's like this is Cards Against Humanity. Now those make me feel uncomfortable, right? Like I've never actually said like I don't feel comfortable playing this game because I didn't want to be like that guy Debbie Downer. But now I kind of have some like resources or tools or resolves now you could be saying aaron you're a grown man you should have been able to be say that well i haven't been i'm just being honest with you um and and now i i think i i think i know how to do it without making everyone feel awkward putting everyone down and then just kind of taking control of the conversation that's why i find so much respect for it because i it's something that i have not been able to do um and so another thing that i i've been stuck in is like crude comedy like stand-up comedy sometimes can be very very like uh crude um and sexual and I, I really just don't like that conversation or that that type of comedy um and so a recruit like movie or, or a sex scene of some kind i'm like let's just skip through this or whatever i don't need to see that and or, or listen to that and again that comes back to uh if something is sacred and you hold to something that's sacred you don't want to talk about it so commonly it's not commonplace it's not like something that should be so flippantly talked about um, and so that's why that particular clip I've had, it's garnered a lot of respect for me. Now, there's there's more to be talked about here. And I think that to put it in context, but I think that is the highlight for me. But let's just keep it going hear about anyone else fucking. I want to make something clear to the straight. I've never watched. I don't watch porn. I've never bought an OnlyFans. I've never paid for sex. My relationship with sex is involves love. And I don't think it should happen outside of love. And I think that's the way that sex should operate. And I think that when you decide, and once again, I could be wrong, when you decide to keep sex exclusively for love, there's something beautiful and special about it. And if you decide not to do that, then you keep chasing a new high. And you can have threesomes and fuck a bunch of girls. And I'm not saying I haven't done it, but eventually you're constantly just chasing a new high and you end up just doing something weird. Whereas if I mean, you just say, I only have sex with girls I love, then it's always special and it's always pretty sacred. And you get... Okay, so here he talks about um, it being special and sacred. Let me to just enjoy it that way. And beautiful children are birthed and just life goes on. 
Yeah, so uh, I, I, I don't agree here, right? He says that I want to have sex with someone who I love. And I would say that is not enough. Love in itself can be just kind of fleeting. A lot of times we think that's, um, and it depends on how he defines love, but love can just usually, it's, it's known as just some kind of feeling or some kind of elated emotion that you have. But inside the confines of marriage, like the Bible says, like how God says it should be, it's, it's love that is strengthened and solidified by law, by vows, by a commitment. And that commitment is important because the love will fade, okay? That love will always fade and it'll, it'll, it'll even morph, right? It, it, could go, it could mature. And so that puppy love can mature into something else and the looks will fade and even the performance, sex might go. Like there, there are couples that who can't have sex or who, um, you know, maybe it's dangerous or maybe can't produce, reproduce or whatever, whatever happens. Um, but you need that commitment, that vow that says, that says, and it's so important knowing that that other person will not leave. And that is such a reflection of how God loves his people. And that's why, that's why marriage is so sacred because it carries the weight of being the metaphor or the example or the picture in this world of God's love, unending, committed love for his people. That's why I hold it so sacred. Now, he he might hold it sacred for different reasons, like because of love, but that's why marriage is such a, a needed component for uh, sex. It's so, you know, it, it's inseparable. And when you do separate it, you have all kinds of problems. And I don't think Andrew even has the resources to kind of talk about that because he's like, you know, He's doing one of these, like, you know, SpongeBob, like, oh, it's everything is going to be great. And so I don't think he has the resources because he, has, he holds to a different worldview. This is where me and him differ vastly. Uh, but, you know, that, that you, you could choose your own personal worldview. But that's that's where I'm coming from. If, uh, in maybe like the last five years of our relationship, I can really only think of maybe like one or two times that we've had sex with a girl off camera. For the most part, we are monogamous. Uh, we just fuck around on camera and i think if anything our realization is is that the world is so extremely fascinated by a couple like us who are open-minded sexually because there's a lot of conversations about polyamorous relationships and you know in, in our case i do think it's kind of disingenuous for everybody to act like we're in this crazy poly relationship when we actually are monogamous uh besides on camera but i mean for us it's really like a porn thing. You know, she shot this scene with this dude as much as she may have enjoyed it or not enjoyed it. It was a money decision. It was like, oh, oh this is going to be a big move for my career and for our family. We're going to be able to retire off of this money. So yeah. I, that, that was the reason for it. Not like, oh, I'm just dying. I have another dick in my mouth. I, I understand. And I'm not a saint. I'm not saying you're sitting here trying to say I'm a so <laughs> He's, he's saying that, yeah, we're totally monogamous. We're totally faithful to each other, except on camera. It's just work. This is ridiculous. This is a ridic it's like ridic ridiculous justification for his actions and her actions. They are doing it for the money. They said it ob obviously. They're doing it for the fame. They're doing it so that you know they they how you make your money matters. Okay, if if, if how you make your money is something that is, by Andrew's words, haram, in my words, sin, in, in, in this disgusting, degenerate way. Like, you know, that's not, that's not a good way to do it. You, you tear down so many things and you, and you mess up. And I, I'm, I'm speaking here like in ethereal, but I could be more specific. You, you set yourself up for disaster for your own marriage. You set your kids up for disaster for their own lives. They, I mean, that that's just that's just a terrible way uh, to go about raising family and kids. That like, oh yeah, look, you, I'm sharing your mom, <laughs> so like your mom can now be free. Like, would would he be okay with his daughter? I mean, maybe. I I guess I don't I don't understand it. I I think that what they're doing is they're reducing sex down to just a physical activity, would it, which it, it is not. Okay. Sex is not just a physical activity. Sex is something that's sacred, something that should be within the commitment of, of what Andrew says, love, but within a committed relationship of vows and marriage. And I'm going to take that further than just love. It should be including love. 
But it's also not just a physical activity like tennis. Like you can't just equate it to being like, oh yeah, I'm just going to go play tennis. I'm just going to go have sex. And it means nothing to me. Um, And maybe she's living in denial. You know, it means nothing to me. But I think Andrew pointed something out earlier that was right. Like this will strain your marriage if if something, if times get hard, you know what I mean? Like and and things get difficult. Yeah, (laughs) this is not, this isn't. To say that you're a vegetarian except on the weekends when you when you eat meat, that's ridiculous. You're not a vegetarian at all. And so to say that he's monogamous except for on camera, it's like <laughs> it's a total fabrication and and believing his own lie and it's ridiculous. I'm saying I'm not trying to talk from a position of authority, but I have perhaps maybe it's my fight career, which Sarone doesn't respect or maybe it's something else, but I think that you can achieve a lot of happiness in life through actually reducing your exposure to certain things. I'll give you an example. I'm not particularly a foodie, but I will only eat once a day. Sometimes I don't eat for two or three days at a time, and that's the reason I love a steak. So right now I have unlimited sexual options because I am the top G and I'm the most famous man on the planet, and thousands of women a week are constantly trying to throw themselves (laughs) at me. And the reason I reject them all is because I don't think I would enjoy sex as a whole if I slept with all these women. The reason I enjoy sex is because I say no to everybody and say no to everything. And by reducing my exposure to something, that's how I still find it interesting, and that's how I still enjoy it. So... I know what you're saying. I'm, I'm just talking from my personal experience. I I try very hard to not give in to any temptations and try to avoid them. And I'm not saying I'm a perfect person, but by doing that, I find satisfaction in the world. So if I feel like fucking, I quite often don't fuck. A, a corollary to that is that we were just on, uh, we were all over Italy and Spain and France on our honeymoon, and we were eating in five-star restaurants every single day, the best food that's out there. And by the end of it, I didn't give a fuck at all about Correct. what I was eating. And now that I'm back home and I'm, uh, you know, eating on a pretty strict diet and exercising and everything like that, you could go get me a McDonald's fucking Big Mac and I'm going to be on cloud nine because it's just so much more potent than the stuff that I'm eating on a day to day basis. So I, I would say that in the sense that there are a lot of guys out there who think that the, the, the key to happiness is just sleeping with as many women as possible. From my perspective, I'm infinitely more happy just being in a nice solid r- relationship where I can really trust my partner as opposed to the way I was, Andrew, before. So before he gets into the rest of it, which they close off this whole conversation, they're talking about scarcity here. And when you're talking about scarcity, they're talking about the scarcity of sexual partners and sexual activity. And so Andrew's saying, like, yeah, I'm not... I enjoy sex because it's scarce. I don't think that's a strong enough word or or phrase. He didn't say scarcely, but it's not strong enough to say like, oh yeah, I, I don't have it all the time, but now I do. I have it, you know, exclusively. And I think exclusivity is a stronger word, right? It all like that person only belongs to me, and I only belong to that person, right? It's a mutual uh, exclusivity inside marriage, inside those parameters. And I think that's why it makes it so so uh, sacred. And I want to come back to that word. And I'll give you an example. So pretend, for instance, that you you got a medal, okay, and you got this little medal. And they said, here, you could have the medal for right now. All right, but little Timmy, you got to share this medal. So you got to take the medal off and you got to put it on someone else. Now, you feel good having that medal. That's your medal. But when you have to give it away and share it, that's your that's your medal. That's my medal, right? I don't want to share this. This is mine. It becomes less special. It becomes now this shared thing that is not mine anymore. It's it's a shared and there is place for that, right? Trophy, you don't have to take the metaphor too far. Uh, maybe on another example to kind of push this. What if you were working really hard and you were recognized for it and you got the employee of the month parking spot but there's a catch anyone can park in that parking spot would you think that parking spot is special no you wouldn't why because anyone can just park their car in that parking spot and that's what's happening is that this guy adam is letting his wife lena is she's the parking spot and everyone's parking up in her <laughs> anyway this guy this video has gone long enough let me know down in the comment section below what do you think of that line of thinking of thinking about sex as sacred is it sacred is it just an activity can it be separated from marriage uh what do you think you obviously know what i think thanks so much for watching uh this this far into the video let me know in the comment section below and i'll get to you guys thanks so much for watching i'll see you guys next video